I'm Alfred Bundy here at the New Jersey League of Municipality Convention in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the 104th gathering of this organization. I have two special guests who kind of stopped by to see us today. We have one who's uh, on the school board in Patterson. Mr. Capers, what's your first name? Emmanuel Capers. Emmanuel yep. Capers. And then we have Robert Artis, and he's from Prospect? Prospect Park. Prospect Park. Tell us a little bit about Prospect Park quickly. Small town, very nice town, nice community, a uh, good place to live. If you want to live close to the city but not be in the city, it's a good place to be. Okay, what county are you in? Passaic County. All right, Passaic. So you like one of the small towns. You like the big, biggest the town biggest town in yeah. Patterson. That's our little sister over there. Oh, that's your little <laughs> sister. Oh, okay, all right. What's some of the, the concerns that you have right now with the Patterson School District now that it's going back to local control because for a long time it was state owned. Yeah. How's it doing now? Uh, we're actually we're doing good. We're doing good, but we have a lot of work to do. Um, you know that's why we're down here too to advocate with some of the state senators, uh, state legislators uh, to talk about our issues. Uh, the biggest issue, and that's where every urban district has, is around funding. Okay. Uh, it's not enough funding. It's not enough around it. Mm -hmm. And you know they want us to raise taxes. You know all that other good stuff, but we're not getting fully funded. So that's our biggest issue. Once you have more funding, you, 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 there's been concerns about getting public schools fully funded by exactly. the state, and, that, and that's still certainly not a new issue. Now. Vaping and e-cigarettes are an issue everywhere, okay? What are y'all concerned about that issue? You're dealing with that issue in Prospect Park? I mean, we don't have a whole lot of initiatives right now because we're kind of following to see how it goes statewide. Uh, you know, there is some opposition for it and for the most part, but then there are some who just really just don't want to get involved. Mm -hmm. We don't have a whole lot of issues with small communities, so thank God for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we do have health fairs, and at that it was discussed you know, what we can do as a municipality. So, you know, as it, as it gets bigger and, and more attention to it, we will definitely approach it. But you're certainly trying to increase awareness. We're trying to increase more awareness. I mean, right now we're, we're following suit, like I said, with, you know, the county and the, and, and the state. The county has taken the initiatives, and as they do, we follow, follow suit to that. I got you. How about over in Patterson, e-cigarettes, vaping, uh, huge. So I'm just going to touch on the base of our schools. And our schools, vaping is, is, is going around country countrywide in terms of vapes going in our schools at like small as USB and how to detect them. So we're coming up with ways on, you know, training our teachers, um, educating them about it, and also educating our parents about these, uh, the cause and effects about them. And uh, we having uh, parent forums around this, and we banned them. They are mm. banned in our district where students can't have them. Mm. Um, it's very illegal. And also we're working with the stores, uh, the, the, the small business owners that surround our schools to not sell these to kids. Excellent. And the, and the importance of not selling them to the kids. Oh, so we got a big initiative going on in Patterson around that, uh, especially with our school district. So we're working with our, you know, private part partners in terms of, you know, the, the business district owners and all that other stuff. So, uh, so that's, the, uh, a, that's the top priority. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Anything we got to do to protect our, our youth. But we also have to tell our parents that they have to do their job to exactly. make sure Monitor. that. Yeah, yep. that's right. To yep. check what's going on. But a lot on. of them don't understand because, you know, kids come in, oh, this is a US, USB cord, mom. This is just a, you know, mm -hmm. something else, you know, or something I use for my technology. Because these things are really small. Right. And, but, you know, so we educate our parents as well. Like, look, this is what you have to look out for. Uh, let me t ask both of you, what's the value of being here at the league? I mean, what, what do you look forward to? Uh, what, why is attending this? This convention important well we education we do some forums to see what's new out there I mean what other communities are doing and how we can jump on some of the stuff that they're learning there are a lot of uh, new technologies out there we're trying to see if we can be a part of that you know some things are you know a lot of really good things come out of every year for us and we end up getting involved in a lot of uh, efforts and you know we work with the county work with uh, city of Patterson to you know see what we can do to find ways to make our community safer and mm. there's all kind of activities. We just passed. Uh, was it the um, uh, Patterson had a, a truck over there for yeah, the yeah, yeah. Animal, uh, uh, animal control, which we use the animal uh, animal control. So you have shared services. Oh yeah, yeah. We have to through the county, through uh, different municipalities, Heldon, Prospect Park, Great. You know, North Heldon, Hawthorne. Yeah. What do you get out of coming to this conference? Now the school boards have their own 
convention yeah, yeah, yeah. down here in Atlantic City probably like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, we did. I was down here two weeks ago. Uh, did a lot of professional development. So, uh, you know, that conference two weeks ago is about professional development around us, new initiatives that's going on around education, and we get to see what other districts are doing, talk to other superintendents. But the benefit of me coming here this week, and uh, I get to see all the state legislators uh, to talk about our problems, our issues around um, um, how our kids, uh, how our budget is criminally underfunded one and then also around other education initiatives how we can work together in partnerships uh, what other cities are doing how they're working with their school districts what are they doing differently even like share service with recycling that's what I learned about out here some cities are doing that and we need to take initiative uh, so how can we work better with our council how can we work better with our mayors what other um, different cities are doing so that's what the benefit of, uh, also I ran I ran into uh, Senator Sweeney just a few minutes ago we had a great conversation Conversation, great 10 minute conversation just about education funding, just to get, you know, pick his brain about it. They had a, a legislative uh, session around education, so I got to see that, just to see what's going on in the state and what's the conversations about it. And, you know, to pick these people's brain, pick these different legislative brain, and that's how we, you know, that's how you get stuff done and get knowledge on it. Okay, now we're gonna go for the short answer now. What are we losing or gaining by having Donald Trump in the White House? Short answer. Everything, losing everything. You're losing everything. Losing everything. That's a way to put but, it. But bottom line is, what we have gotten now with this guy is segregation. All the the work that we've done for so many years mm. to make us, all of us, not just black people, everyone equal, giving everyone a seat at the table, is gone and is going away. And if we don't do something about it, I stand very strong about this. If we do something about it, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So I I, I just keep my fingers crossed every day when I hear something, you know, that he has done. I, I, it, it's hard to watch television sometimes to mm. see the stuff that he does, mm. and what bothers me most is to see the people that support him. And you know, it's hard. I, I don't want to say because you're not in my shoes, but you're not in my shoes. Reality is, I'm a black American who has not necessarily suffered as much as my parents and grandparents did, but we went through the legacy of all of the negativity that had been, you know, betrayed on our people for so long. To have someone who has not have to deal with that agree with him, to me, is just it's, I, I, it's unfathomable. I can't even imagine, and I have friends, and I hate to say this, but my friends who support them, I'm rethinking our friendship. Nah, <laughs> we're cool, but think twice. We are really out of time. We one short answer here. What are we losing or gaining with Donald Trump in the White House? Short answer. Like my friend said, we're actually losing a lot here. We're losing a lot of seat at the table. We're losing a lot of resources that's coming in, um, especially advocacy around uh, the education uh, field. But what we're gaining is a lot of people are more aware of what's going on. We're gaining more of uh, more people getting involved in the process, running for office, uh, getting registered to vote. Uh, people, get, uh, young people, millennials, and everybody else registering people are getting registered to vote so that's what we're gaining and you know more people involvement so that's what that's what we got well, mr cabers and mr artist i want to thank both of you for joining us right here in atlantic city i'm alfred bundy for altice usa thank you